Okay, so what I'm going to be showing you here is how to do a simple scatter plot. Um, this is very useful when you have two measurement variables that you're trying to see if there's a relationship between them. So uh, what you typically hear as a correlation. Um, so what I have here is data from 26 people. So this first column, column A, is our just participant IDs and they're just numbered right now 1 through 26. Um, and then we have in column B their one repetition maximum of their biceps curl as predicted by um, a multiple RM set. So in other words, they did um, somewhere around six to 10 repetitions of biceps curls. So just curling their arm up one arm at a time. And we used how many repetitions of that they could do of a certain weight to predict what they could do if they did a single repetition of the one R or a single repetition of the biceps curl. And then what we did is we actually did a one RM, so one repetition maximum of the biceps curl. So we're going to see how well this value, these values are correlated to these values. And we're hoping that there's some sort of prediction uh, or predictability of the uh, biceps one RM based on the predicted um, biceps one RM. So. In order to uh, make a scatter plot, what you want to do is have whatever variable you want displayed along the x-axis, so along the horizontal axis, to be in your first column of data, and then um, the other col oh, the the other variable should be in your next column of data, uh, and then you simply highlight all the data, including I'm going to highlight the headers. So what's what the data is, um, just like that. So just click and drag and then hit insert. Go to this uh, icon that looks like um, uh, just dots uh, on a figure or on a graph because that's what a scatter plot is. And then when you hit it, it's going to bring up these different options. What I'm going to do is just a simple, um, a simple scatter plot with dots. None of this um, sort of strange stuff that Excel allows you to do. Um, so I'm just going to click here, this first one, and this is our very basic graph. Um, so we're, we're going to have to do a few things to make this graph useful and something that would be acceptable in, say, like a, a classroom type setting or as an assignment. Um, so first off, let's just change this title. Um, if you've watched my other videos on how to do graphs or if you've had me in class, um, you'll know that I like the chart title to be something descriptive, something meaningful, but not something I'm going to learn from what's going to be on the Y or X axis titles. Um, so eventually we're going to put them in these, but let's just put something here for now that um, I know I'm not going to put on either of these titles or either, either the Y or X axis titles. Um, so something along the lines of, um, let's say, strength, predictions, multiple repetitions. So maybe not a perfect uh, graph title, but um, not too, too terrible. All right, so now if you click off the, uh, off the graph, you're going to see that there is no... Um, uh, there's no drop down menu up here or any sort of tab that gives you graph uh, graphing tools but if you click back on the graph you're going to see this chart tools pop up so that's what we want go to design and then go to add chart element and so from add chart element this is how we're going to add both the x and y axis graph uh, uh, x and y axis titles so go to axis titles and this is your x-axis, this is your y-axis. We're going to add them both. So let's just do that. And then let's do the other. Okay, so now we have both of those added in. They're nothing descriptive, nothing useful at the moment. Um, so let's go ahead and fix those up. So we'll start with the x-axis. We don't need this right now. Start with the x-axis. Um, replace the, the stock text there with, uh, let's see, predicted, uh, let's not use that word, uh, we're going to have to, so predicted biceps 1RM, 
And then this one is just biceps 1RM. All right, and um, we need to put units on both of these. So right now, I just uh, if you look at it, it's just some, some text that tells you what is being shown, but it doesn't tell us what the numbers mean. So we need to um, add to the end of each of the axes titles um, our units. And as I've said before, you want to use um, parentheses to uh, enclose your units. It's just the, the standard way that it's typically done. So do open parenthesis. Both of these are in pounds, which isn't so typical. Usually you would use kilograms for any sort of science-based measurement, but it's okay for our demonstration here to use pounds. It's something that most people who are doing some sort of resistance training, they're gonna be used to seeing pounds. So there's some justification uh, for doing so. All right. So now I have, um, on both the axes, I have something in text that tells us what it, it, the axis is depicting, as well in the parentheses, I have whatever the units are on that axis. Um, and so at this point, uh, I would call this a, a reasonable graph, something that I would accept in um, an educational setting, so a class that I teach. Um, if you have any sort of legends that pop up, they're usually not necessary um, in a graph because you can get everything you need on one of the axes or as in the um, chart title. Uh, so if you have a, a legend of some kind that comes up uh, and on default with your version of Excel because each version is a little different, I would delete that. But again, otherwise, if yours looks similar to this, I would say that is good enough. Um, and it depicts all the information we need pretty well. Um, so what I will do is show you how to um, add a, a trend line. So we're going to specifically be showing how to do a best fit trend line here. So again, if you click the data, go to design, add chart elements, go all the way to the bottom to trend line, and we're going to be doing a linear trend line. Um, so these other ones aren't something that's uh, it's beyond the scope of what we're talking about. So just a linear trend line is just fine. And you can see now we have this best fit trend line that shows us uh, essentially what the data is doing. It's uh, if you have a low predicted 1RM, you have a, also a low 1RM uh, when it's actually measured. And if you have a high predicted 1RM, you also have a high uh, measured 1RM. So that's kind of what the point of the line is to help you see the data um, for what it is rather than just seeing all the individual data points, which is also good, but um, it helps to have both of those. So that's the, the end of this video. I am gonna put a video up that will show how to take this and make it look a little more professional. Um, and I also will put up a video that will show you how to do the statistics on this in Excel. And I'm gonna do it um, sort of a very manual way. All right, hope to see you then.